What's going on, everybody? Welcome to Fight Network's Downtown Studios. I am John Ramdean alongside Cody Saftik. A busy number of weeks for the Ultimate Fighting Championship starting this weekend in Houston, Texas. It will be the return of the Korean Zombie. He has not seen action since uh, 2013. Has a stern test in Dennis Bermudez uh, since the last time Korean Zombie competed in mixed martial arts. Bermudez has been very active. Seven bouts against quality opposition. However, we know how good Korean Zombie is. Do you believe that he's changed his game instead of that just constantly moving forward, looking for the knockout, working with the guys at the lab, Benson Henderson, former lightweight champion, and John Crouch, one of the great minds in mixed martial arts right now. Do you think they're gonna try to break down his style in order for him to have success in today's landscape? Well, as a coach that just has a guy like Korean Zombie walk into the gym and decide, you know what, I'm gonna do my next camp here, you can't change this guy. So it's possible that he's evolved and changed himself over the last three years, but we haven't seen him compete, so we can't really draw that conclusion. You have to assume he's gonna be the same old Korean Zombie, and that's not to say that he can't be effective. If you look at Dennis Bermudez, he can get emotional in fights. He can get into a firefight like we saw when he fought Jeremy Stevens. Awesome. And when a fight like that occurs, and there's so many more openings, that a guy like Korean Zombie, who's known for his striking prowess, can definitely take advantage. So. I like the fight and I, I hope that he's in good shape. Still only 29 years old, he's still conceivably in the prime of his career. Yeah, I, I think he probably is. And considering you know, he had to step away from mixed martial arts to join the South Korean military. And while he was there, he was teaching hand-to-hand -hand combat. And I would imagine his mind is more analytical. He's looking at the, the landscape. He's seeing how his style, because again, the Korean zombie, we know that he has skills everywhere. If he goes to the ground, he's gonna try to submit you. But we like the Korean zombie because he goes after people with the knockout in mind. And now we're seeing all these guys that are defending the takedowns and making all about attacking during that space. The striking level of everybody is rising. How do you think the Korean Zombie will fare in this new 145 pound division? I think one thing that definitely goes overlooked is if you look at Korean Zombie and you look at the way he's always fought, you look at that war with a guy like Leonard Garcia, you look at a war in that fight with Dustin Poirier, he's taken a lot of damage. Now, most notably in the Jose Aldo oh. fight, pops out his yeah. shoulder and he attempts to fix it mid fight, John. The guy's known for his toughness. Now, he pulls out of a fight about a, a year later, scheduled from after the, the Aldo loss, and once again pulls out from a shoulder surgery. So now you give this guy three years off, not only is he going to improve his skills, but his body is going to heal up. It's going to be a lot more healthy. So if he's got a lot more spring in his step, so to speak, he can bring that war. He can bring that those elements that he used to bring in the past. Instead of being like, you know what, I can't really push the pace the way I'm accustomed to because I'm a little bit banged up. If he's 100% healthy, and no one ever is, but if he's even 90% healthy, then we're in for a treat here. Dennis Bermudez, uh, because of how comfortable he, he will be at this stage, you would imagine, he wants uh, ring rust to be a real thing. So you would expect the game plan for Dennis Bermudez, as BJ Penn said throughout his career, be first, look to score on the Korean zombie, exhaust this guy, make it a full mixed martial arts spectacle. Obviously it starts standing, try to beat him up in the stand-up game, push him up against the cage, pick him up, slam him down. When he gets back up, how important is it for Dennis Bermudez to constantly go after the Korean zombie, make him work because he hasn't been in there in a number of years. Yeah, don't give him any space. And one thing with Dennis Bermudez is uh, Fight Network caught up with him in Saskatchewan and he seemed to be a lot more analytical about his career. He was talking about how he wanted to fight Kawajiri. Who wants to fight Kawajiri? It's Kawajiri. But, but he saw that he matched up well against him. And that showed that he's looking at tape on his opponents. He's looking at the division. He's seeing the names and the guys that he wants to fight. No doubt he wants a big name guy like Korean Zombie who, if he has troubles in the wrestling department, then Dennis Bermudez can take advantage of that. If he has trouble with the ring rust, then Dennis Bermudez can take advantage of that. But for anybody that ever said, well, Dennis Bermudez can still get caught, and that last fight against Hani Jason, it's almost a similar matchup in the, the guy's very well-rounded, he's very aggressive, and he's got a lot of power. So what do I need to do to neutralize that? Use the wrestling, push him up against the cage, use that speed, get on him, use that athleticism. And those are all things he did fantastic against Hani Jason. I'd expect him to have to use these those exact same elements in this fight as well, but he's got all the tools. It's just whether he's able to apply them on fight night. It is a very important fight at 145 pounds, and given the landscape of the featherweight division continues to change, this is a fight we need to keep our eye on.